A pleasure to be here uh, today to be able to share with you what we're doing from an automation perspective. Um, and this topic is a really great one because it brings together three unique technologies that will really enable some breakthroughs in terms of what we can do to automate uh, control systems, process control networks, um, and really the OT side of the shop, which has been a new area for us at UiPath where historically we've really focused on the IT shop, automating a number of various backend systems from ERP systems, uh, back office functions like AP and AR, uh, going to the front office in terms of uh, customer support and uh, in sales processing as well. So the OT side, as you know, uh, deals with the distributed control systems and process control networks uh, and a variety of IoT based systems that are out there that are uh, collecting a variety of telemetry data, making that available to consoles at the HMI layer, uh, as well as to uh, systems like multivariate controllers to be able to deal with things like uh, blending or recipe uh, controls as well. So. I think I've got a little bit of a delay here on my end. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just try and switch over to uh, the presentation itself. So uh, we first want to talk about what does automation mean in terms of the context of robots um, and what UiPath is uh, embarking on in terms of a fully automated enterprise. We believe in a vision where uh, humans can effectively transfer work to robots and if those robots can perform the work that uh, typically are done on a day-to-day -day basis, the highly repeatable rules-based work uh, on the IT side of the shop and back office. These are things like typically uh, dealing with invoices and extracting data from invoices and comparing the invoice line item level details with something like a purchase order. Uh, highly repeatable work, very much rules oriented. Uh, it's a perfect job historically for a robot to take on because those rules can be codified very easily and a robot can execute those rules uh, day in and day out. So that really unlocks the new opportunity for humans to take on uh, more interesting and exciting work and be a little bit more customer facing or supplier facing, uh, helping to deal with uh, customer sales strategies or supplier strategies as, an, as a result. Uh, additionally, we believe there's an opportunity for a robot uh, for everybody inside of an organization. Uh, so everybody should have their own robot that's performing this work for them. Um, and on our platform, we've really built out a tool set that enables us to be able to democratize the development of robots, uh, the workflow that a robot actually executes, make it very easy for a business user uh, to basically go in, work with our tool sets, take a process that they do, do today manually, record it, and then uh, transition that into an automated workflow. And so we believe that this combination of automation uh, coupled with AI now is really going to unlock some really great new potentials because AI introduces the opportunity for us to be able to deal with uh, uh, non-rule-based types of events where there's uncertainty and we need uh, probabilities, where there's uh, changes in terms of demand uh, for something and we need to be able to forecast that change uh, in what it means inside the organization and then be much more adaptive and responsive uh, to these types of changes within the enterprise. Uh, so just to give you a view, you know, a number of our customers are using our platform today. Uh, we've enabled AI in just about every facet of our platform. Uh, so we have uh, computer vision that allows us to be able to work with a number of different legacy-based applications. Uh, in the OT world, these would be the typical uh, you know, consoles that exist, many uh, Windows-based applications that have been developed that are used by console operators to be able to monitor uh, the IoT environment and understand some of the telemetry data that's coming in in real time, uh, alerts, notifications, uh, and be able to respond to those uh, much more effectively. Uh, additionally, we've incorporated AI to be able to have a robot intelligently read a document, extract data from that document, and be able to incorporate it into a workflow as well. So lots of really fascinating ways that AI can be incorporated into the platform uh, overall. So uh, as we all know, uh, AI is really kind of opening up this new world for us. Uh, distributed control systems and process control systems have been around for quite a long period of time, um, and uh, they've worked quite well. Uh, oftentimes, the data is uh, in a proprietary format, or uh, it transfers from device to device or from device to console uh, through a proprietary format as well. Uh, there's obviously efforts underway in the industry overall, like OPC UA, to be able to open up uh, these data and make them more freely available. 
Um, and then we have process historians as well, too, that uh, contain all the tags and the set point type information uh, based upon a polling interval that comes back from those uh, from those devices to the process historian. Uh, but AI allows us to take that data and now use it in different ways, right? Where we can look at probabilities, we can look at different configurations based upon data that comes back from the telemetry devices. And what's really enabling this is that we have much greater compute power. We have cloud-based capacity now where we have very elastic environments where we can scale up and scale down uh, to be able to handle uh, compute intensive type of workloads in the IoT type of environment. Um, and then we're seeing uh, significantly greater and smarter algorithms uh, from computer vision to uh, you know, more of the traditional uh, statistic and regression based models that have been used historically for yeah. scoring and for forecasting. So uh, from there, you know, we really envision that RPA and AI and IoT are really going to enable a new class and set of applications. Uh, unlocking that data from the crop process control systems and distributed control systems, making it available to a smart model that can predict a future outcome, um, and then set the configuration of the environment to be able to achieve that outcome and achieve a higher level of optimization. Uh, so uh, over the next you know, five to 10 years, uh, we think there will be some profound uh, enhancements overall in terms of bringing these worlds together, IoT, A, uh, AI, and RPA. So I mentioned them, uh, some of the uh, opportunities for bringing AI into a DCS or PCM type of environment. So dealing with uncertainty, uh, where we have many different changing environmental conditions, and Ken, who's, uh, who will talk to us about uh, some of the innovation that he's doing in smart farming and smart agriculture, talks about these environmental uh, devices that are used inside of greenhouses, very large scale greenhouses uh, with various types of uh, changing atmospheric types of conditions uh, within the greenhouse. CO2 levels, the temperature, the, the uh, uh, humidity levels, the frequency of light, the spectrum of the light, etc. cetera. Um, these uh, algorithms now can deal with this, these various types of uncertainty and then forecast the best configuration of these environments to be able to achieve a greater outcome. In this particular case, often the outcome is a better yield, or we often think about better quality or better uh, reliability in terms of keeping uh, a grid up and running, if you will, uh, or gas running through a pipeline on a distributed control and SCADA-based network. Uh, also, we can deal with many different type of parameter input values. Um, and we can set those configurations and do a model, feed them in there and have the model return out the optimal settings uh, for the environment, uh, similar to a multivariate controller that would be used within the environment. Um, uh, also, AI allows us to be able to deal with a lot of high variability. So multiple configurations of devices based upon and settings for those devices, depending on the crop that we're uh, actually growing. Uh, so the, the configurations and the environment will be different for tomatoes than it might be for low potassium salad, uh, as an example. So we can start to optimize for different recipes, essentially. Um, and those recipes then uh, relate to what's the configuration of the environment in the implementation of uh, the settings uh, for light, for temperature, for humidity, CO2 levels, et cetera. Uh, the other aspect of uh, bringing AI to the table is using computer vision to be able to deal with uh, some of the legacy applications that are used in the environments. Uh, obviously, there's HMIs on the devices sometimes uh, where we have to physically go out and uh, visualize or see what's visualized on the HMI and set a control value. Or we may have a Windows-based uh, application, legacy-based application that's running on a, on a server or on a client. Um, we can actually unlock that using computer vision and have a robot uh, visualize and understand what's happening on the screen uh, to understand the current uh, situational awareness of the environment, uh, monitor steady state types of conditions, as well as uh, when abnormal events uh, or incidents occur in the environment as well. Uh, so computer vision is really allowing robots to see the screen and understand what's on those screens and really then move beyond uh, the typical types of alerts and notifications that we would think about and having more uh, smart uh, notices and events and even taking action based upon what the what the robot is monitoring on the uh, desktop application. 
the other thing is being able to set the controller's input value. So as a new configuration is returned from a machine learning model, uh, we can have the robot pick up all of those environmental settings for the devices and relay that down to the device uh, specifically um, and uh, do that on a highly uh, frequent basis uh, to be able to optimize for, again, the greatest outcome that we want uh, for the environment. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Ken to talk about how some of these capabilities are being used uh, in some of his uh, breakthrough work specifically using machine learning to be able to optimize yield within the smart farm environment. So Ken, uh, do you wanna pick up from here? Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, I hope that I'm unmuted now and um, let me share my screen from here. So, oh, so let me go all the way back here. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, thank you, Mark, again for the introduction and uh, for having me here. And uh, in this uh, particular uh, portion of the presentation, I would like to talk about how we have a combined uh, IoT, RPA, and AI all together for commercializable, uh, sustainable food production in, inside greenhouses and, and vertical farms. So, um, Quadra is a startup. Is a is an AI startup, and we have a, a, a strong mission. Of we, we want to turn greenhouses and, and indoor farms, such as uh, vertical farms, uh, to be autonomous. Uh, so when uh, when uh, a greenhouse is autonomous, then uh, we can scale the, the knowledge to many farms around the world. So uh, that's a, a very high value already. But more than that, we can have a model that performs even better than an expert grower. So that's also our commitment. So we want to produce a solutions that uh, returns higher yield, which translates into higher operating profit for the growers. And the third uh, value that we provide is while achieving higher yield, we will also use less resource usage such as less electricity per kilogram of tomato. Uh, uh, and that will uh, also contribute to the, to the overall uh, sustainability uh, for the environment. And all of these are powered by uh, principles machine learning, by real uh, machine learning. So uh, next. Uh, I would like to talk about some sample applications of uh, artificial intelligence in the greenhouses. And then I will focus more on the problems uh, that uh, Quadra is uh, mostly uh, doing uh, nowadays. If you think about AI applications in controlled environment agriculture and agriculture at large, there are a variety of, uh, of interesting uh, problems to solve at the small, at, at the low complexity side, uh, you can have you can have simple machine learning models, uh, not so simple but simple enough so that uh, you can have good return of investment. For example, uh, smart nutrient diagnosis or having a, a, a yield forecast so that you can do better planning. And in order to have a a, a decent yield forecast model, it doesn't. It, um, it doesn't take uh, a lot of a lot of uh, resources to to build a success in, successful model, given that yeah, you have uh, good historical data. And uh, uh, some more complex problems include microclimate prediction, both sp spatially and temporally, inside uh, the greenhouse. Uh, or another problem that is gaining a lot of interest in the agriculture community is the automated pest and disease detection. And so for the pest and disease detection, uh, it's 
it's not a simple problem, but it's, it's a manageable problem. And many, many companies uh, have, uh, are working on that using the computer vision techniques. And we also had worked on that before, uh, consulting for another uh, major company. Uh, some very interesting problems and more complex problems uh, uh, that are getting a lot of interest is uh, the robotics, uh, the real robo physical robots, uh, robotics uh, uh, in the, the inside the greenhouse. And the problem that Coidra is uh, has been focusing on is on the autonomous control. So uh, as Mark already described, uh, it's an uh, industrial control and automation uh, problem, uh, if you think about it. So at every time step, uh, we, uh, our AI program receive the latest data from a microcontroller or from a, 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 a distributed control system. Uh, and we also received some uh, 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 low frequency data from uh, manually inputs by the growers. And we will do, uh, we will run through the AI model and we will provide uh, the set, the, the updated set points, the, up, the re-adjusted uh, optimal set points back to the microcontrollers so that we can keep the greenhouse at the balance and optimal uh, climate level. Uh, and it seems uh, fairly easy. Uh, it sounds simple uh, for some uh, simple situations, but greenhouse, the, 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 the dynamics inside the greenhouse, and, and especially when you, in, uh, when, you, when you take into account the dynamics of the plant's growth, it's very complex. So there's a lot of thermodynamics uh, that, you, that uh, we need to include into our model. And we also need to include the crop model, the plants, how, how the plant grows. And we combine that with, uh, so we combine physics with uh, um, uh, machine learning. And, and in this case, model-based uh, reinforcement learning to uh, be able to compute the optimal set point. And uh, we demonstrated that in, uh, uh, in the uh, first International Autonomous Greenhouse Challenge. And during the time I, I was still working, uh, I was at Microsoft Research. So during this challenge, uh, there were two goals. The first goal is autonomy. Can, and, and this goal is valuable in itself. Can we encode uh, the complex horticultural knowledge into an autonomous uh, agent or a robot? And the second goal uh, is efficiency. Can we even uh, outperform uh, the current uh, baselines? No. And this uh, challenge and the results are very well uh, published. Uh, there's a publication about that. If you are interested in uh, learning more uh, about the details, uh, I'm, uh, for the sake of this talk, I'm just going to show very quick results. So. Uh, our team was the team Sonoma. So I was the leader of that team uh, uh, at the time. And this is our results over the span of four months uh, of growing uh, greenhouse cucumbers. So in four months, uh, our AI agent was able to grow more than 50 kilograms per square meter. And over the four months, this is considered very, very high yield. And, another, and if you look at the reference growers, they achieve, and this is an expert, uh, no, not just one expert grower, this is a team of two expert Dutch growers who has, uh, who they are the, fine, the very fine growers in the world for, cu for greenhouse cucumbers. We outperformed them. And if you think about that, uh, so we, we uh, outperformed the Dutch growers by 6% in, in yield. So 6% increase in yield may not sound a lot to some of you or to many of you, but that translates into 17% in operating profit. And for, uh, for the greenhouses, uh, and especially for high-tech greenhouses, the capital expenditure is very, very high. And, and, 
and people invest high capex in order to have low uh, operating uh, cost uh, per uh, unit of uh, of, of uh, revenue. So 17% in uh, increase in operating profit is, is is a lot. And if you compare the results of Sonoma compared to that to another team uh, that was led by a globally known consulting firm, Delphi, the margin is even wider. So uh, that was uh, the uh, initial results that we got. And uh, in order to apply that to commercial greenhouses, we ran into some problems. Because most uh, greenhouses, just like any uh, factories or any manufacturing businesses that use the autom uh, automation, they rely on a, a distributed control system, some, some legacy, some, some existing control systems. They are not going to change those control systems. So we need to work around those legacy systems. And that's, how, that's where UiPath comes in. And we were able to use to, to leverage UiPath for the integration with those legacy systems. And this is a short animation showing how we use UiPath to automatically read the data from those uh, legacy uh, control systems and be able to change the set points also through these uh, uh, legacy control systems. And using UiPath, it was very easy for us to, to to integrate with what the customers are, uh, are already using and, and lower the barrier of uh, technology uh, adoption. And uh, thank you very much.